This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast episode 294. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in uh, Mayhem Studios. And it's so mayhem today here in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to talk tech, get geeky, and maybe uh, maybe, maybe a little little hindered by that today. No live stream today. Uh, you guys can usually join us at live.sorgatronmedia.com. But uh, we are sans internet. The internet is down. The system is down, should be the theme song <laughs> of this uh, the strong bad. I, had, I, I need to find that to put that out there. Huh? Had you been able to get onto the internet, you could have found it. I could have. I could have. <laughs> but uh, we got a crew in here. And thankfully, we already had people coming in studio. Have Slice, Will Book. Uh, with us in studio, of course, John Chichilla, back in Studio A. That's me. It's good I to faked be you back. out. Everybody's I, at John come, today, I, so I faked yeah. you out. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I come back and it's all broke. It's all broke. Welcome. Welcome to the Broken the broken Awesome cast. We'll, we'll talk a bit more broken about that. Mayhem. Of course, Broken <laughs> Mayhem. Oh, we'll take it. You're not, wait till you see what that is. John Lang from Looking for Group. How's Pittsburgh it going? is with us. Your first time on Awesome cast, but you did join us. We had a great interview with you back when you guys opened on the awesome chat that everybody can check yep. out over on awesomecast.net yep. how are things going they're going great having a great time over at lfg about to start academy pittsburgh and all kinds of stuff going on awesome awesome of course you know, we, th- we talked some academy pittsburgh on here and plug that stuff um and uh and, and so we should get a little bit more than that on the show actually as we go um and uh, uh and of course looking for a group uh, we, we we hung out over there for the wrestling mayhem show 10 year yep. party had a blast over there the guys the guys really want to go back we gotta get something scheduled we gotta get our, our schedules aligned and go go check out uh, uh some more stuff over there we've got like a uh, beer tasting coming up we've yeah. got Got uh, Artemis all night happening this weekend. Mm-hmm. If you've ever played that, if you like, uh, if you like Star Trek, and you ever wanted to be on the bridge, Artemis is the game for you. That's right. I remember. Um, That's what we were talking about on the interview. Yes, yes, yes. And we have a uh, we have a whole bunch of stuff happening all month. Just every every day of the weekends coming up. Awesome. We have uh, things going on. Awesome. Check out LFGPGH.com. I think I got all the letters right. That's right. All right. Like I said, it's the Awesome Cast. You can check us out at AwesomeCast.net. <laughs> yeah, live streaming whenever the internet wants to play nice with us. That's what happens when a modem explodes. I, I think it, it definitely imploded. You know, we, we've used so much internet. We burnt through it with all the live streaming we've done out of the studio here. Uh, but anyways, uh, go check us out uh, over there. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, all the places in video and audio versions. And uh, let us know what you think uh, at awesome cast on the twitter or uh, awesome cast uh, group over on facebook and uh, share some stories with us or see what we're kind of looking at and, and checking out throughout the week as well so let's get into it so uh, i think we kind of agreed to not necessarily do an awesome thing of the week uh but considering this week's very interesting circumstances that we've run into for podcast day um uh, Ch- chilla I, I, i'm gonna go defer to you to to pronounce this one what, what was your question that you wanted to pose so how do you how do you prepare and what do you do in the case of either a power outage or an internet which outage? we've done the show in a power outage so we too. have done the, yes we've done the show in a power outage <laughs> and now i have a ups over here <laughs> notice <laughs> the ups though doesn't help when you have no internet connectivity. No, but again, if you guys were all here in the studio, we have a UPS, we could still record the show or the show won't crash at mm-hmm. least while we're going here. I don't lose the show, which is another thing that's happened. The power goes out and boom, that file is corrupted, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, so which is another consideration. So that's one thing we've done. So we're kind of half there as far as the show. Again, mm-hmm. lucky you guys were all coming in the studio already. Um, this show, everybody's mostly local. Um, my wrestling show where people are in San Antonio and Poughkeepsie, New York and El Paso, Texas and, and, and California, we have a problem. We have a little bit of a problem going on there and we have another method for that. For, for, for those, could you use, could you use hang out over the, over a broadband or a wireless device, like you a could, cellular connected device? You could like in the long run, but you know, I, I, I disqualified those as, you know, that's a meter connection. 
And I don't think sitting there on like a Google Hangout for two hours is really great, mm-hmm. you know, and and I prefer to keep that quality up, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, so, you know, well, I didn't know if, if everyone else started it up, if whoever had the strongest connection would mm-hmm. kind of run it and it would only be one person as the. No, the, I think that does. I think that does P2P style where everyone okay. gets everything yeah. all yeah. the time. Okay. Yeah. So you're Basically. sending out to everyone that's in it and, and they're, they're all sending in. to you at the same time. Right. Right. Exactly. Uh, so it, it, and it, so it's all, all kind of dependent, you know, on mm-hmm. each one, on each other. So like, like, you know, I mean, if my, if my, I mean, if my, my connection starts going, it doesn't affect the other guys as much. Like it's basically like, I think of it as like the connections as good as me to Google. Mm-hmm. Right. And for everybody. You know, Google is the central hub versus when we do the shows here, it all everybody's image is as good as their image coming to me here in the studio. So and that's been something I've kind of trying to figure out, like what makes more sense there when we do that, too. But, um, but no, generally, I, I, I think, yeah, that's an option. But uh, but I think we're just going to leave it to these guys and, and leave it straight. Google Hangout that'll up the quality a little bit since we don't have this in studio graphical element that we do with the wirecast here and uh we'll just roll with that and, and i trust those guys they've been around long enough they can <laughs> they can they can do the show without me they'll be fine but uh but we're here and, and actually audio listeners are not going to notice much probably any difference you know uh, just better because everybody is in studio probably so um Sheila, you're you have a connected house so yeah the, my house just fails epically <laughs> with no internet and no nothing um, you just have multiple uh, canisters of hummus. Uh, yes. For, well, and for that reason, there, there's different things in the house that we've I've actually changed out over time. We did have some some devices that required Internet connectivity mm-hmm. um, to even turn on specific lights. And we've moved those lights to actually they have sw- physical switches there that run over a network connection. Yeah, but they can they can connect directly to the to the light itself. Versus having to have that internet connected. Like you used to have to control it from your phone. And that was the only way to control like the TV. Right. Now there's actually a hardware remote that you could go over and grab and interfaces with that same system. So is so, this is this something that you've made a determination because you've gotten stuck before? So yes. And my, I, my irrational, my one irrational fear is not as much of not having internet. It's actually of not having power. So the TV and lights aren't as big of an ordeal no um without power but i will say if if there's the chance of thunderstorms and i think i'm gonna lose power like the entire like my house every every device that can hold a charge gets plugged in immediately from probably like six different laptops that i don't even Mm -hmm. use on a regular basis because guess what those can recharge my phone and my my tablets. <laughs> so I've actually used multiple laptops, charged them up mm-hmm. to hold battery charge to then recharge devices like a like an iPhone or an iPad or an Android tablet or whatever. This is the I, IT version <laughs> of filling your tub up with water whenever the nukes hit, yeah. so you have clean water. Yeah. So well, I've never heard that. You didn't know about now that. I, now now you I know. know about that. Also, uh, use your hot water tank. I, I'm just full pic- of clean water. I'm picturing Chilla now, um, just running around and plugging stuff in as my dad. Whenever there was a, a tornado, going around and closing all the windows. Mm-hmm. You know, like like this emergency mode that happens. Now I will say that that I have powered a small portion of the house off of my iPhone, mm-hmm. which then causes battery drain, which is why you need like six laptops worth of battery. Thankfully you have like <laughs> how many phones did I just find in your bag before? The so show? yeah. So, and that's the <laughs> other thing too, is I have a Samsung galaxy note. Yeah. I have the iPhone. The one thing I'm actually interested in and I've thought about doing is getting Here's a good tip. Um, if you have a cellular connected iPad, mm-hmm. Because the iPad's battery life is meant to power that screen all the time, for it to just power a a Wi-Fi hotspot, it can go like twenty four hours. Oh wow! So there is that. There's a tip for you if you if you're if you're ever wondering like what a good use for that cellular connected iPad is. If other you have than that just iPad having one. a cellular connected iPad, <laughs> yeah. it it can because the battery is meant to power that screen for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. It can easily broadcast Wi-Fi and pull a cell signal for for 24 because it doesn't have to power the screen. Um, (laughs) 
I think Sorg's going on like eBay to find old iPad 2s. Well, all, I, I, all I've ever done as I sit here and I just uh, I'm shuffling iPads here. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I mean, we, we, I've only gone Wi-Fi because I never saw the need for a, a cell version just just in my use case. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I, you know, just never thought of that. But but still like these because I mean, these are handy. I was actually like kind of considering how, you know, it's a nice like like it's a nice experience to look at Facebook on an iPad one. Because it's several versions back and doesn't have all the bells and whistles that, that annoy you, right? <laughs> so you don't like you don't get all that extra stuff that they just announced at the FA conference today. You know that that's going to bug me in the near future. Clash of Clans can't even run on it, so I you're know. totally safe. <laughs> you're totally safe. You know, I mean, it, it, it's it's a more um, um, closed down kind of experience, and I, I, you know, it's a mindful experience. If yeah. you really want, I have one of those uh, old WebOS ones at, at my house. I'll plug that in for you and bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> was that one of those that like we, we had the, the run on them, the, the, the run yeah. on them that we had? Yeah, like, I have one, but yeah. mine's not cellular connected. Mine's Wi-Fi. Oh, only. No. I think mine might be Wi-Fi only as well. But that was seriously a lockdown OS if you used it at all. So close to being nice, but not quite. Not quite, man. So one of the other things I do personally is I, I have not just the laptops. I have extra batteries. Um external batteries uh the case that you actually pulled out of the bag is it actually a battery case so i don't know i put a lot put, of random stuff out of that bag <laughs> if you if you take the an iphone and that's actually meant for a 5 or 5s mm-hmm. um it's a mophie juice juice pack case mm-hmm. so you put the phone in that case and it's actually an extra full iphone charge built right into the case which is pretty nice um so so from that aspect i think i've done pretty well as far as dealing with power outages um the one the one time that i can say that i ran into a a, an issue um was when i think it was verizon was installing fios in oakland um they cut an electrical line oh no and we were i was without power for about three days um, to the point where for work, I actually went to Cricket and bought a USB. And this is years ago. I actually went to Cricket because they're, you know, pay by the month. And I got a USB dongle for my laptop so I could have internet. And then I used Windows sh- internet connection sharing to connect out over that. But I would back then this lap, is, laptop battery life's two hours, right? This is like the new age <laughs> merit badge is is internet without internet. You know, I mean, that that's amazing. We, we had um we had we had that because of uh, snow again several mm-hmm. years ago, like when there was so much snow, we really couldn't even get off of our road. Right. Mm-hmm. It was that bad. Uh, we went two days without power and did pretty OK. Um but thankfully, our neighbor uh, uh, ran an extension cord from his uh, generator, <laughs> so so we had a little bit of a reprieve. Um, but yeah, it got a little like, well, I guess we'll just lay around here. At, le- at least in the winter time, you can take the food out of your refrigerator and store it. True. In the cold, when True. it's warm out, you're kind of wow. I better eat all this ice cream real quick. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, it was a it was an interesting experience, right? And they still got mad at me for not coming into work. Uh, I don't know. I mean, well, I was actually, back then, I was actually, I was on call that week, too. So I ended up having to, I actually went to the Beehive in the south side um, after work. And I work, I, I hung out at the Beehive because they had internet and electricity for the mere price of a cup of coffee. That's right. Um, and I hung out there and, and they didn't close until usually about midnight. Mm-hmm. So I would actually hang out there till midnight. I would leave there and then I would go home. And my laptop held enough of a charge to get me through like one on-call page, an emergency, before I had to <laughs> start making my way back to work. So, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting what you do to get by. Um, and I'm definitely interested in, in what other people do to get by. I, I always hear, um, I don't know if you listen to Annie Nanako's podcast, mm-hmm. Nanako, but 
a Naco Almanac. It seems like every year when there's the threat of snowstorm, he recounts like the like week he went without power. And he's a writer, right? Mm-hmm. So he just needs to get to a computer and write and upload and, and make that connection, right? So like, you know, traipsing to, you know, what can you get away with? Traipsing to the Dunkin' Donuts that's a few mm-hmm. miles down the road and, and just living living like a like a nomad, like a like a digital nomad uh uh you know a little bit so yeah, it's interesting um john so looking for group we were actually kind of talking about a little bit beforehand like like right you guys are kind of set if the internet is gone for whatever reason yeah um we have enough games to last however long uh the pictures of your board game night are absolutely epic yeah for one thing. yeah we we have a lot of people come over for board game night so we end up with a whole lot of board games mm-hmm. and and yeah, we can, we've even dealt with, uh, we had a power outage on our build out actually while we were, uh, building LFG. If you go way back in time on our Facebook page, you'll see a picture of us laying carpet with it pitch black <laughs> inside and you can, there's some light coming from the big windows and that's how we were laying carpet for, I don't know, 800 square feet. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> that's awesome. But, uh, yeah, we, we have. All kinds of board games, but we also have a whole bunch of land games that don't mm-hmm. require the internet. That's like one of the things that I 3D. make sure we have that. Yeah. We have uh, Unreal <laughs> Tournament, the uh, UT99, which I'd love to play. Um, but we get everything that we can off of uh, GOG.com. So there's no sign in to play it. Nothing nice. like that. Good old games, Even, right? Yeah. 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 Even th- uh, Call of Duty, like on PS4, lets you do pure land games without logging in, which nice. is pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, because like Microsoft got totally rid of that entirely. I think Call of Duty is the only one on the Microsoft ecosystem that is allowed to do LAN. Uh, wow. That may change in the future now, now that they've opened up their network policies. But yeah. Um, a few of the PlayStation ones can play without any internet access, which is nice. nice. Remember, that's the way Halo used to be. Yep. Yeah. Halo yeah. was LAN only. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even when live came along. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think um, the the PC version was the one I had, and I think that's when they first introduced multiplayer. Right. I remember mm-hmm. getting slaughtered a lot on that one. Um, but I, I actually had to build my own. We were buddies of mine, and I, and I built our own WAN. So we actually there was we built a PC that plugged into our home internet, and then that Ethernet cable came out and into the back of the Xbox, and then all we had one computer in all of our houses that talked to each other, so it acted as if we were on the same network, wow. so we could play Halo. <laughs> wow! Yeah. What was the um? I'm sorry, we're getting old, kind of old school gaming now. Anybody remember Kali? Yeah, Kali was, and Hamchi. Mm-hmm. They, I don't know. Oh, I remember Hampton. Yeah, they they did the same thing. There was basically a VPN. Yeah, they, between the uh, VPN mesh, they they faked the local network in order, yep. which was then the first that you could play across the internet. For, for I think yep. it was originally a Hamachi, Hamachi, something like yeah, that. Yeah, and then and then what was the remote desktop kind of utility? Log me in, bought them. Oh, oh, I didn't yeah. realize that. So, which is kind of funny. Uh, um, Halt and Catch Fire, like, kind of touch on like early online gaming ideas, um, mm-hmm. which kind of the second season of it. So, yeah, I just slammed through that a couple weeks I, ago. I know someone that their backup their backup network plan. And I forgot that just dawned on me. I forgot about this person. I haven't talked to them in so long. Their backup network plan is they have a friend <laughs> that lives. They live on the top of a hill, and they have another friend that lives about two miles away on the top of another hill. Yeah, but they're houses are line of sight yeah and they actually had coffee can antennas oh yeah that'll that, work that if they're not if one person's internet goes down they flip over flip the coffee can antenna on and then they have like a, a two mile they can yep. get the wireless signal on the coffee can antenna two miles and they switch routers and the other routers configured to use to bridge that other person's network yep I that's mean, that's awesome. That's how um, they bridge gaps at uh, MetaMesh. They they don't use coffee cans. Uh, I, I don't want to say that for sure. There there may be bridges that they jump with coffee cans. Uh, but no, they, they do a very similar thing where they use that uh, that exact technology to, to get to remote places that don't have any way of getting physical like lines in. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, 
Well, uh, from that, uh, thankfully, I'm I'm out of town, so I would be uh, being a digital nomad, anyways, uh, starting tomorrow morning. Um, but uh, I, you know, I, you know, thinking about like you know, you know, just this morning, you know, I was getting some work done here, and and realizing, and I've had this in the back of my head. It's I think it's like I knew. I was like, wow, if the internet went down, there's like nothing entertainment wise I'm able to do. Even we're talking about my Xbox 360. I moved all my save games to the cloud. And the one time I didn't renew my 360 uh, live plan, I was like, oh, there go my late, my save games. So like without the internet, it can't check in and I guess authenticate mm-hmm. your save games to go play a local game of Tomb Raider or something, right? Start over from the beginning. <laughs> it's like, well, nope, no internet. I'm starting over. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that kind of thing. Or, you know, I've been really getting into Apple TV. You know, yeah. I, I live on watching WWE Network, you know, <laughs> and that's just not a, not a thing. You know, thankfully, you know, thankfully, I guess, you know, we, we, we pour into having a really good connection on our phones because of all the stuff we do, how mobile we are. And uh, and, and that's it's really interesting to see um, um, how much I lean on that. But then I have to hold myself back. It's like, yeah, we can completely stream podcast day on my phone. But holy crap, is that going to be expensive mm-hmm. yeah. in the long run after a night <laughs> of streaming, streaming that? I mean, the LTE is plenty fast enough around here. You know what you should check into just as a I, I wonder. So um, T-Mobile has the unlimited for specific streaming cases. Like I know that you get Netflix, you get HBO to go you, that, that don't go against your cap. Hmm. I wonder if it would be worth just as a backup to have like a hotspot with a pay on a pay as you go plan that you could spin up like in the case of emergencies Yeah, in the case of emergencies. And then like, I wonder if hangout would then, I wonder if hangouts in that unlimited stream plan. I would be surprised though, if anything upload based is in there, yeah, it makes I sense don't... to do it with Netflix and, and what have you, you know, Netflix will take one of their giant boxes over to T-Mobile. I, I don't know if you've ever seen those. They have, um, we basically have big computers that have a significant percentage of their content on them. Mm-hmm. So you're actually, whenever you're streaming from Netflix, you're streaming from your local data center directly to you. You're not going all the way to Netflix, which is how, how they get around some of the, like that makes it easier for them to, mm-hmm. to give it out for free um, or, you know, make it so it's not metered. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know that if you were trying to upload, though, they would allow that kind of non-media. yeah, and I don't know, and I know they the other thing for their streaming is they do cut the download to right. 480p versus right. 1080 or 720. Yeah. But if you're if you're looking if you're in that pinch, right? It'd <laughs> no be good to know. Hey, we've been looking at things for. I know uh, someone I was talking to recently had a streaming solution for like going to do events when you you know a lot of these venues aren't aren't up to snuff, and that's where right. the reason I don't do pro wrestling streaming because we don't have um they're very much very specifically is not internet mm-hmm. in some of these buildings because they're gymnasiums right or even like even we were up in meadville this past weekend for for a show yeah. and and then you know hey chachi check on such and such he's like i don't have I, he's t-mobile i was like i don't, I don't network up here you know and, which is a very standard thing mm-hmm. so you have to make sure there's something that's reliable and is in all those places and even you're talking about gymnasiums but even if you're talking about like the david l lawrence convention center here right uh, the internet is not generally unless unless whoever is there is paying enough money to really make sure they have proper internet. You're not going to have an internet no. uh, connection there that you could stream Cause, cause from do, the floor. Do they bother to have a dedicated line for hey, I want to stream something, or does it get too too saturated? I know console goes to great lengths and partners with Verizon to mm-hmm. make sure that Verizon customers right in console center have you know, adequate because right. satur- saturation then right. becomes an issue because yeah. there's been several times at consoles early on anytime i go mm-hmm. there it's like well yeah. not gonna be tweeting during this thing i guess i got four bars but it doesn't matter right but console has has a reason to do that though because the people that are coming they need to have people tweet out that they're at a pens mm-hmm. game that they're enjoying themselves that they're mm-hmm. doing this and that and so they get a lot of value from that right the david l Whenever you're saying you're at Teco or, or at Replay or at the car show, they're not getting that mm-hmm. kind of Replay like, th- and Teco are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's not as valuable to the David L mm-hmm. because if if you go to a conference with great internet, you remember that conference with whatever the conference was that had great internet, not the location. Right. Had great internet, right? Like right. New York City Comic Con. New York City Comic Con. <laughs> uh, the Arnold was pretty crazy too. 
Um, but yeah, every, uh, every year code mash uh, yeah. is awesome. That's at the Kalahari, which is uh, the water park over in Ohio, the mm-hmm. indoor water park. Hmm. I don't know if they bring in specialists to do it or what, but it's like 3000 or 1500 or something like programmer nerds that mm-hmm. wreck most networks, but that one stays up. But I think of it more of as, as a code mash thing, not a Kalahari thing. 100 people at PodCamp Pittsburgh. <laughs> 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 no, that's been actually pretty good lately. Yeah. And, and just general cell service has gotten better, too. So And we're all on different services, so, mm. so that helps. Well, um, well, thank you guys for, for uh, digging in on this topic to around the, the, the issue of the day of, of my melting... Uh, I have a new one. I, I have a brand spanking new uh, modem in the modem in the router. I hate calling them. It's not a, it's not a modem, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but uh, but so hopefully that means a a, a a finer tuned stream for you guys in, in future podcast days here in the in the weeks to follow. So looking forward to that. Are you gonna do your whole redo your whole DHCP scope? Oh, you're gonna have all kinds of fun when you return. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and I get back like Monday night. <laughs> And I'll have a whole like not even twenty four hours to get make get things up and running. So we might be doing this again next week. So chill. <laughs> we're going to do the shows from your place and sure. uh, <laughs> <laughs> through a table in the basement. Oh. I got plenty. I got seventy five up and down. I just and I could I could throw some network ports. Oh, you guys, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm my mere twenty five up and down yeah. over here. And then uh, and then and and John, you said uh, LFG has how how much one fifty synchronous <laughs> all yep. oh, oh oh boy. Uh, when you have that many people running their own like Twitch streams all at the same time, you have to you have to have enough internet for them to handle it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you ever have people fight over the board games? Fight over the board games, as in like flip the game and like start a fist fight kind of fight? No, what- like hey, I, there's like all the the little pieces are used up in Monopoly, and there's no more room. for Well, that's people. actually a, a specific. Uh, Strategy in Monopoly is you buy all of the houses so no one can buy. No, they're like the, so. So there's only like well, the it's thimble. like for or four to six like a, players. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like where like he hits the six player maximum and they're like, I want to play too. Nope, sorry, we're full. Uh, I'll be honest. Uh, specifically with Monopoly, I think most people at LFG hate that game. <laughs> um, or Clue but, or anything. Uh, we have a bunch of games that uh, people really want to be certain positions on. I don't know if you've ever played uh, Code Names. Mm-mm. Code names is a pretty cool game. You have a, a 25 card grid. It's five by five. And each card just has words on them, individual words like Mississippi or bug or car or motorcycle, whatever. They're just a whole bunch of random words. And then what you have are you have two teams and each team has a code master. And what they see is the the card that you pick up. It shows a pattern of like it shows them what cards they have to get their team to guess. That's where all the their spies are. And you're trying to get your team to guess the right one. And so you have to give them a one word hint and then tell them how many cards that pertains to. And they have to take that many guesses to try to guess their own card. And they're trying to avoid one specific card, which causes them to lose the game. And they're also trying to avoid the other team's cards. So um, people fight over being the the uh, code master a lot because that's a lot of fun. You're sitting there looking at the words trying to figure out all right these three words go together but they go with this fourth one that isn't one of ours and Mm -hmm. and and so it's a lot of fun coming up with interesting ways to to do that same with uh mysterium which is if you mixed clue with a game called dixit kind of heard dixit dixit is and and this explains mysterium as well dixit you have just a deck of cards that have these fantastical pictures on them they're all kind of surrealist fantasy uh pictures that could be all kinds of things. Um, and the point in that is similar to, say, Balderdash. And I keep getting deeper and deeper into other games <laughs> to explain stuff. But where you're trying to go down the rabbit hole. Right, so you're trying to get people. So one person is responsible for saying giving a description of a card. Okay. And then everyone puts in a card to to that matches that description. And then everyone then then you shuffle them and flip them up. And then everyone votes on who they think the first part person's card was. Okay. The first person wants to get at least one person, but not everyone to guess theirs. So they're like just obscure enough to get someone to guess it, but not everyone. Okay. And 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 that's all you do in that game. So Mysterium works very similarly, um, except you have with Clue, you have a ghost that is trying to tell everyone that's playing how they got murdered. Okay. And they can only speak through these cards that are like painted with these like kind of surrealistic paintings and mm-hmm. they're passing out cards to all the other players 
and trying to see if they can com- get them to understand what they're saying just with the cards. With the cards, okay. And, and people love to be the ghost in Mysterium. Mm-hmm. And there's only, for each game, there's only one ghost. one ghost. There's only two code masters for e- or spy masters for each uh, game of code names. So no fist fights yet, though. Now there's, now there's a bunch of games I want to try. Yeah. Well, we'll just have to plan an awesome cast night. You know, we do have an anniversary. Co- we have a 300th episode coming up. So yeah, maybe we'll have you to should. schedule something here. What, was, what is this number? 294. Very soon, actually. Very soon. <laughs> so uh, you, you're you certainly welcome to come by. Uh, if you want on a Wednesday on a on a board game night, we'll set you up an area where you can cast and you can play some games live and, and talk about it. We have a lot of games that... Uh, are a lot of fun and very easy to explain and get people into and are still fun for other people to watch. We did do, um, uh, we're going on all kinds of rat holes. We did recently a, um, an RPG um, hangout. Oh, with, okay. Um, yeah. I'm not going to remember the world, all the names, but um, uh, the Worldwide Wrestling um, RPG. Uh, we, we, he was a guest. The, okay. The, the fellow that worked on that was a guest of another show, and, and he uh, DM'd. Uh, Mm-hmm. General managed how how GM <laughs> GM yeah GM actually I guess that kind of makes sense. Is he the um, ringmaster? I, 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 no, uh, yeah, I guess did that he dress, works. Did I he dress as works. the taskmaster? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, we but we did that that kind of thing, and and yeah. uh, it was it was pretty good. It had some pretty good reception, and and uh, and. and it was, it was cool. So I, I and I know like like Will Wheaton did the board game thing for a yeah. while for Geek and Sundry, right? Yeah. Like that was one of the big YouTube channels like mm-hmm. a bit ago. It's uh, uh it's funny if you go to any game store, they all say as featured on whatever mm, their whatever that the tabletop YouTube. yeah tabletop uh channel was. That's that's good. Would I mean you? that's a very deep niche thing that those people yeah. are looking just like Leps plays or stuff yeah. like that. Settlers so. of Catan. Settlers is good. That's the one I keep hearing about it. Oh, it's amazing. I've not gotten into that yet. So so this isn't tech, but I can talk a lot about board games. I can talk a lot (laughs) about lots of games. Uh, But Settlers, so are you familiar with like Euro games? Uh, That that, um, name for a type of game? I feel like that's a video game vendor. No. So Euro games is actually a class of game. It isn't a specific vendor, and Catan is one of the first ones that um, exist over here. Okay, and and so what that is is you know we had Sorry and Monopoly Risk. and Risk and everything, but there was a in the '90s, early '90s, there was a wave of new games that all mostly started in Germany, okay, and then started coming over here, beginning with Catan and Carcassonne. Okay. which are mm-hmm. like um, it's really economy based and it's not um, like there are a bunch of strategies you can employ and and a lot of what board games are being made out of now. And uh, they're just called like as a group Euro games. And so uh, Catan is like the the one that everyone starts with mm-hmm. and like learns the style of game and then get into more complex ones from uh, uh Agricola, which is just ridiculous. It's like if you took uh, Catan and then added five thousand new things to it and made it take four <laughs> hours to play. There's it's a pretty long game to begin with, depending on how many people you yeah. have and whatnot. Yeah, and the, the one thing I've heard a, a lot of people doing is, I guess there's an online version. Mm-hmm. Um, there but was... the, the online version isn't like words with friends where you can kind of put it down and then oh, really? pick back it's up. Just... I heard it's like real time. Oh, so interesting. You really have to get in there and play, but people learn all kinds of new techniques yes. yeah. by playing with people all over the world. Yeah. Did you ever play it on uh, both Catan and Carcassonne came out on Xbox live arcade on the 360? Oh, I haven't played that. They're no. both really, really good um, because the, both of them have fairly simple scoring, but it's like, you're keeping track of a bunch of stuff and like mm-hmm. a computer can do that for you way better than you can. Now you're not playing all together in the same room, which makes it better just by default. But, um, it's so good to play those games and you can learn the rules so fast and like try new, uh, strategies and everything so fast on the, on the Xbox ones. I really highly recommend them. If you have a uh, 360 still or, I wonder if they have it for the, the one. I have no idea. I'll have to go find out. We'll if it's backwards compatible or not. You'll look it up. TV. If, well, if we had the internet, we'd be able to tell <laughs> if you. If we had the internet, we'd find out. <laughs> well, guys, uh, we don't have the internet. 
but we do have some great pizza from our friends. They don't need the internet to keep making pizza. Sure. Slice on Broadway, our friends up here on the what used to be tracks up here in Beachview. Uh, now it's just uh, in front of a barricade. But that's okay. You can get there and they still deliver. I know for they a fact. Still deliver. I've, I've used their delivery service. Yes, if you're times. in the South Hills, please, please uh, be a patron of them. As as uh, I'm sure it's tough here with a uh, you know there is no parking over there right now, uh, so we need to go and fade very soon. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, go check them out. Also, they're on Main Street down in Carnegie, PA, or brand new over at PNC Park, the home of the Pirates. So thank you that? to Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcast. Supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the finest pepperoni pizza now at PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And uh, also, please uh, say hi and let them know you heard about them on the awesome cast over at PGH underscore Slice on uh, Twitter, as well as on the Facebook and uh, on the Instagram for Slice on Broadway. Thanks to them. All right, guys. Uh, so, John, while we got you here, I know you guys, uh, you, you think, thanks to you guys, you uh, the first I've uh, put my face in an Oculus uh, mm-hmm. Full on Oculus, <laughs> right? <laughs> the terminology as we get into these are going to be. <laughs> you I, got a face full of. Oculus. I got a face full of Oculus, <laughs> and and had a lot of fun with that. And um, so so we've been talking about the VR. But, you know, uh, you know, of course, uh, Chill over here has the uh, the gear that we played with. Um, I have been um, I'm cardboarding it up like a hobo over here, uh, like a <laughs> VR hobo. And uh, and uh, and uh, but but you guys are are very deep in it. We had a great conversation actually last week about yeah you know, what's going on in VR. Our, um, our lunch the other day uh so you guys are deep into it you guys are, are kind of keeping an eye on things mm-hmm. and uh tell me like w- what have you gotten your hands on so far uh, out of the new stuff have, have you got any yeah. uh, the new kind of finished headsets that have come out yet so so it turns out oculus just had a big shipping issue they, oh. one of their parts got delayed or some of their components oh no and so basically everyone that was going to get it shipped in april has been shoved back some as late as june or further Mm. So um, we don't have the consumer version yet, but all of the software still works on the DK2. And we just got all of that installed and Mm -hmm. got to try that out. We took the VR rig down to Teco and uh, put it at the Extra Life booth. Uh, So it was really just a trick. So people would stand there and watch people playing and then they could talk to them about Extra Life and and running the charity. But the the new Oculus software is really nice. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it at all. I've seen they I saw them setting it up on the new screensaver. The great episode about two weeks ago, the new screensaver is about the entire episode was about VR and even okay. shooting and, and VR okay. kind of stuff, yeah. like 360 video. Uh, but they, they, they had finished their ultimate gaming PC enough to install it. And yeah, that display is that that setup's pretty nice. They put a lot into that. Yeah, yeah, it, it's nicely designed. You can now it, it's almost like its own console now. Yeah. So when you start, you're you're in the living room, and there's a menu in front of you that you move your head around to to select things. But you can get to the store without leaving it, without taking the headset off. You can start games without taking the headset off. Uh, the only thing that uh, pops up currently, and I'm betting they'll fix in one of the later SDKs, is some games that you install require you to hit yes on the uh you know admin question like is okay. it okay to to allow this software to update your computer and um so you have to look at your desktop for that because that won't pop up on the oculus okay. but the the rest of it the so, rest of it so is all pretty self contained do, you know, do you know did they build the oculus store for gear vr at the same time and in, in was it in tandem or are they so they kind of work like Windows 10 and Windows Phone, like are they I kind of a universal no platform? So, because so, the the Gear VR, that's the that's the one thing I do really like is that when you put the phone in and you start right. it up for the very first time, it's like you need to go download the Oculus Store. Oh. And it downloads the Oculus Store, and then to your point, everything you do from there on out is mm-hmm. look around and then you select right. and, and everything like that. So it seems, I believe, at least on the PC side, this is a, a loader, but doesn't change how you have to like it's not so much like the Windows phone and Windows unified mm-hmm. um, area where they wrote their own environment that runs its own VM to run mm-hmm. everything together so you can actually write the same code. Mm -hmm. This is still running like you're still writing things in Unity or Unreal Engine the way you normally would. You're not writing in a in a custom environment, but this has a nice loader around it that keeps it all together and running nicely. It's more about the interface, not necessarily the underground development tech. 
Okay. Yeah. Right. More right. like more like what Steam does, especially with Steam Big Picture, if you're familiar with that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It, it just gives you a nice interface to everything so you don't have to have the thing that you used to where you're taking it off all the time to find the next icon to double click and then put it on again, which like is like cardboard, like the cardboard. Yeah, definitely had that problem with cardboard. Then I got to reline it up and I got to undo the Velcro <laughs> and I can feel the thing wearing out. Yep. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, cool, cool. I, so I know I know we talked about like you you do have a Vive coming. Yep. Uh, yep. So we have a Vive and a, and a CV coming. We have them both. A CV? The 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 consumer version of the Oculus. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah of course. And do you, are you looking at the PlayStation one as well? Uh we're going to get it uh, because we're going to obviously try it and let people try it at, at LFG. Um, I'm not super excited about it. I, I haven't seen anything real on it yet. Mm-hmm. So that, that's the thing. The, the other ones are tangible. You yeah. Know? Even to the point yeah. like we, you've been able to put a Samsung phone in a thing and do with this thing for a while. Right. And and Can how it, long did you see? But the, the Vive still isn't officially out yet. It, yeah. it sort of exists. It's it's, it's about the ship. But how long have you been seeing videos of people doing things on it? Eight months, 12 months, longer? Seeing like seeing the setup, seeing everything. The Oculus has been in people's homes for three years now or something mm-hmm. uh, since the first release of the DK1. But there's been nothing in terms of video that you can see or real specs or what it's going to look like when it's really plugged into a PlayStation 4. So... I don't know. I don't have a lot of faith in Sony making peripherals. Fair enough. I mean, even looking at um, so okay, they're re so this is the rebirth of their PlayStation Move because it's all right. included in it, right? Um, what have they put out that really has caught fire? You know, I can I can't think of anything there. I mean, are I, you talking about on the Move on, on the PlayStation on the Sony? I, I I can't think of anything. So the PS4 is crushing this this cycle, obviously. Um, but I don't know that Sony themselves, other than they've got the new Uncharted coming out at some point. Um, but in terms of things like the Move, in terms of non-standard, um, like just base console, like AAA level games. I mean, I remember when the move came out and they were showing all these tech demos they were talking about. Do you remember that one that was supposed to be uh, casting spells like Harry Potter? You yeah. hold it like yeah, a the, wand. Yeah, the, the book and everything. Yeah, that never came out. Really? Uh, not that I ever oh, saw. Really? I don't. I don't think that ever actually existed in in a real <laughs> fashion. <laughs> it's um, like the, the what they, was they they. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say they had like some stuff with the PlayStation Eye. They and they did a couple little mini games and they just dropped it. The PlayStation Move probably has fewer games than the virtual boy. I mean, (laughs) I'm not going to say that for sure. I'm not going to say it for absolute sure, because I haven't looked this up in a really long time. And this is the thing that I remember Best Buy dedicating so much space to it, because I remember going out there and they had the Kinect and the PlayStation Move right next to each other, these giant spaces. So there was dedication to try to make it work. And even the Kinect fell off. Yeah, Connect fell off. Um, I love the I see, and I can't. I I, I just as a Connect owner, I don't even. I, I can't fathom. Oh yeah, he, having it connected to your Xbox is the greatest thing. Just to be able to yell at your Xbox yes. to do things, it's so nice. Or, um, I mean, or, that's just or a, as we do while we're on Hangout, we yell at Bobby F J Town's Xbox to do things. <laughs> Bobby, and, and it does stuff. Like Xbox, you. go to Pornhub.com slash. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we uh play with the connect though at LFG we have uh dance nights and that's great but Mm -hmm. mostly it's there as a webcam because it it shows you funny video when you're done like the even the games for the connect now barely use anything Mm -hmm. like in terms of scoring with the connect versus like the Wii it was part of it it was part of the ecosystem um you know I I it it, you got really dongle happy after a while though unfortunately well you gotta get an attachment to this thing like wait how many nunchucks do I need (laughs) what why is my game yelling at me that this thing is not attached you know but so many of them just worked with the one or two attached things and you're good to go yeah I I think they definitely overcomplicated when they had like let's do a giant tablet that's not good as as good as the iPad (laughs) you know well it's it's one of those things though is the if you look at the Wii sales, they had the lowest attach rate of any any console. They just sold so many mm-hmm. of them that even with that terrible attach rate in terms of number of games sold per console sold mm-hmm. that 
Um, you could still make a bunch of money on it. But anytime they tried to do a sort of like a standard, like what Sony's good at, like that standard triple a, um, Mm -hmm. sit down and like, uh, uncharted or, um, dark souls three, which just came out, anything that required any kind of precision. Like when, um, what what was the, Wii one, the Zelda one, uh, skyward sword. Right. Like Uh, the later one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one where he turned into a werewolf as well. Twilight princess, twilight princess. Um, a lot of that was fighting the game because you knew what you wanted to do. You wanted to slash up and down instead of horizontally, or you mm. wanted to do a lot of whatever flailing. action. A lot and of flailing. It would not reliably give you the action you wanted, right? Mm-hmm. Depending on your setup and everything, it was just you were more fighting the controller than you were enjoying it. Whereas, like Wii Bowling, mm-hmm. it was close enough to like you figured you were doing it close enough that it was totally fine you were never fighting the controls in any of the Wii Mm -hmm. Sports stuff it just like worked how you expected and so like that those did great and trying to do Skyward Sword was just terrible (laughs) and that's like they never found anything for the move or even the connect the connect had a couple here and there like the dance games but the move never had anything Mm -hmm. that was like the Wii games where you were like oh this is just exactly how I want to play this. This is exactly how I want to experience this game. And I feel like um, some of the Oculus stuff is actually hitting that again already. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, this is how I want to experience this game. If you've played uh, Omega Agent at all, that's one where you have a jetpack and you're flying around and you can shoot at things. But basically, it's got like an old school, uh, no one lives forever kind of look. Okay. It's a little bit uh, cell shaded, cartoony. Kind of like a Team Fortress thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And you're really just flying around yeah. and you can shoot at things, uh, but it's all targets just set up and you're just going around a city with a jetpack. And that sounds like, like it sounds like, like, like the um, um, I expect you to die. Yeah, game like yeah. It, it's a very like well complicated in your figuring out how to do things. Sure, it's a simple concept. Exactly, Be, you know, and it's a a one line concept basically. Mm-hmm. Like you fly around, and hit targets. Like that's it. Yeah, but and, uh, but that think experience. about wee bowling. Think yeah. about wee bowling. Mm-hmm. You're just yeah. you're just throwing a ball down a lane over yeah. and over again. Yeah, but but having an experience that you can't replicate easily. And especially there's no competition in terms of the Oculus other than the Vive, which could Mm -hmm. do the same thing in that case. Um, But really, there's nothing else out there that can do this kind of immersive play Mm -hmm. that that exists. Like there's nothing out there that's going to uh, make I Expect You to Die nearly as fun. Have you gotten to try that one? I don't think I've played that one. I've I've played around with uh, the Space Team one. Okay. Which is was started off on that like the iPad and iOS devices, and I think they put it on Android. I haven't seen it on um, Oculus. And then the stop talk or don't stop talking. Uh, keep talking keep and nobody talking explodes. explodes. Yes, yeah. um, that's a great one. Um, so the the uh, I expect you to die is a, a a closed room, locked room, escape room, escape the room oh. kind of game where you're just sitting in a car. You're a spy who's been captured. You're sitting in a car that's in the back of an airplane and you're trying to escape. And so you don't move at all. You just turn your head around and you can grab things that are around you and interact with them. And it's like, can you figure out the order of operations to get yourself out of this situation? And it's like just playing around in discovery. And it's like any of the old adventure games from back in the day, any of the old LucasArts ones or what have you. You have a bunch of items that you're trying to combine in different ways to figure out how to do this. Uh, The really neat thing is you're in a car. And so, um, you know, we had a kid, it was really funny. Uh, we had a kid who was playing the, playing the game and he's probably 12 or 13 and his parents were watching and his parents were like, we don't know games there. They had him when they were much older. So they're in their fifties, maybe their sixties ish. They're like, we never played games ever, but you know, he's really into this. He wants to try this. And I was like, sure, just, you could watch him cause you can see the screen and he's seeing it in full 3d. Um, and you're in a car and the first thing you have to do is start the engine. Right. And so you're looking for the keys and he's looking all around. He's looking down under the seat and he's looking over in the glove box and stuff. And his mom is behind him going, look up, look up, look (laughs) under the sun visor. (laughs) And it's just like, it's one of those things where when you're actually in that kind of thing, you're immediately thinking of like in a normal video game, you rarely look up like in doom or UT like that. That's a weird mm-hmm. thing to do. Yeah. But if you're sitting in a car 
and you're like, well, where are the keys? Oh, I'll look up at the sun visor. And that's like a totally natural thing and a, mm-hmm. a really cool thing that you can see people do. Isn't that, I mean, it, it, the, the initial thing with Wii Bowling and the Wii Sports was you don't have to learn how to play a game. Yeah. You just do the thing you know how to do, swing a golf club just with this thing in your hand. It was about the motion and the feel. Exactly. And that's what really kind of encapsulates, like just got people. That's how you got grandpas playing. Yeah. That's why the Wii is at old folks' homes. Yep. You know? yep. um, I mean, and I think it's it, it's that. I think that's the thing that, that people are kind of attaching to. You know, mm-hmm. We're not interpreting through um, uh, controllers that are having more and more and more buttons that were like, you know, I, how many times I, I like go away, I haven't played Tomb Raider in like six months i go back and i'm like halfway through it i'm going to have to go back and relearn the game yeah so how do i do this and I crawl this <laughs> way like nothing is terribly intuitive right, right, right. And, and and except for that initial reminder system at the beginning you can't just jump into it because it's different mm-hmm. for every game yeah you know yeah and and they're not quite there all the way in terms of the having grandpa play it on the oculus mm-hmm. but certainly the that instant presence that you get Whenever you put it on your head and then you load up something and you're looking around and all of a sudden it feels like you're there, that gets everyone that tries it. They all are just amazed that this is a real thing that exists. Now, do they have do they have a lot of the videos and stuff like that? Uh, we haven't done any of the videos, but I need to try some of them because they seem like they're really cool. Some of like the museum walkthroughs look awesome. Some uh, of the roller coaster ones are pretty real. Like you really feel like. Yeah. I've done some of the 3D. Coaster. I've done some of the I, like the 3D roller coasters. Mm-hmm. I haven't done any of the real ones, but that would be that's another one that uh, we need to try. We just haven't we haven't downloaded it because that's yet. the that's the one thing because you because I don't have a controller, so I'm kind of limited in some of the things that I can do. Like I can play the space game where you use the buttons on the side to, yeah, to shoot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's where I'm. I I love that immersion of. I'm going to take a tour down the Nile river. Cause I'm oh, probably yeah. never, ever going to go there. Yeah. Really, I want, yeah. I'm going to stand on the top of the empire state building. Yeah. Um, because I'd like to go there one day, but I want to see what it looks like right now. Yeah. Um, that's where the, a lot of those, they, they keep pumping more content into the milk VR theater mm-hmm. and the, like all the Oculus stuff. They yeah. keep, they keep generating content. So it's, mm-hmm. it's, you're, it's not like going to YouTube every day, but it's you, it's quite, and, no, it's it, quite an, it's quite a catalog. Yeah. And I, I really think that, uh, gaming aside, I think there will be some cool things with gaming. Um, there are some cool things with gaming, but I think really where VR is going to get people is doing things like you can't go down the Nile because mm-hmm. you, you can't go to these places because you're not healthy enough, because you mm-hmm. can't walk, because you don't have the money to do these things, because they don't exist anymore. You can't, you know, when someone starts doing things like here is a realistic version of what the Mayan temples were like back whenever they existed and you can go wander around them, that's going to be amazing. Isn't this an, ex- isn't this an extension of like, have you guys been to the Omni Max da- yeah. down in uh, yeah, down, yeah. down at the Carnegie Science mm-hmm. Center, right? And going to like I remember being going to uh, the 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 Grand Canyon like fly mm-hmm. through movie or yeah. the or the, for some reason the the uh, the 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 the, uh, the beaver one we saw yeah, where like yeah, you took a, they took a camera like in through the beaver dam and everything yeah. right you yeah know, i like, remember that one but again that that all around you encompassing thing yeah you're in a plane you feel like you're in a plane and you get motion sickness mm-hmm. like that's and it's done for a hundred people at a time on a grand scale on a freaking you know four-story tall screen right um but uh but this is this is kind of miniaturizing that process um well is there actually something that came up this week um called the uh the aura uh 4i i believe mm-hmm. this is oh um, yeah I, I i'm just gonna hold up my 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 insanely large <laughs> laptop in the background for you guys on video since we don't have our our, our setups this week but uh it, it's just a it, it's a prosumer camera so i mean that's you know cameras you guys see me like those are prosumer that's the, about the level that i operate on for for productions right and this is in that you know, range versus like Nokia has one that Alex Lindsay's been showing off on the on on uh, this week in tech. That's like sixty thousand dollars, right? Or that one that uh, 
Lytro makes that I I don't think they even listed a price because right. if you have to ask about the price, it's <laughs> you not don't want to know what the price is. <laughs> but this is but this is something that it, it's it, you can actually get for under two thousand dollars right now in B and H um, uh, up until April thirtieth, and it's going to go to about three or four thousand dollars afterwards, right? Which is in the price range of of you yeah. know something that yeah. is affordable, it's an understandable for a, price range. Exactly for a professional, they can probably swing that if they're really serious about this, yeah. right? And this, this one will let you live stream this. Uh, yeah. I believe it does. On a 30, but, yeah. but the thing is, delay. Yep. they only show the stick in this, right? Like it's it's a camera on a stick, and it does the the full video, um, and it does it full res, and it, it looks like everything looks looks like it's pretty sweet. So how is doing it? So that sixty thousand dollar camera, last I knew, they're still processing that. Uh, yeah. what they were what they made out of it right uh and stitched it together and everything this thing actually comes with a pc a yep. dedicated pc that's attached to it that you run i think it, what would i say like a 300 foot cord or something like that you could you could run it off so you can put it in the middle of something right and uh it, and it does all the processing on the fly and does the stitching on the fly and you're good to go you know, mm-hmm. I think that's, and a, that's actually the same. The the people making that are the ones that do the software for all those sixty thousand dollar cameras. Yeah, they're the mm-hmm. ones that make that stitching software, which is probably the the hardest part, especially if you're streaming it to stitch it that fast and get it yeah. together and be clean. And and if you're if you're the if you're the software maker, make think of the way they can tune that hardware too. Oh yeah, I mean they, that that I mean you go back to Apple and how they. They own everything. They own the software that runs on the hardware, um, and, and and across those devices, it's the same thing for this manufacturer. They're going to be able to completely tune the software in this case to the hardware, mm-hmm. and vice versa, because they're making they're making the entire platform soup to nuts. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the big thing. It's going to be content, content, content. This is the the point where 360 videos are back when we all got HD TVs, and the only mm-hmm. thing we had was Discovery HD. Right. And the sunset <laughs> yeah. over the Serengeti. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you is... what, though. Planet Earth is still the best thing made in <laughs> yes, HD. <it> is. <laughs> you know, and I, I can't wait to see that in uh, on the Oculus. All right. We're with that with 4K. Now it's dividing. Like we got the 4K and we get the 360 stuff. Yeah. And I feel like people are doing a little bit more 360 stuff. You know, mm-hmm. I think the GoPro generation is like, oh, it was just like what we've been doing by putting this camera in some place. We didn't usually do it. Let's do the same thing with 360 camera. Put yeah. you in the experience like that mentality is already there. Right. And you just need to modify it a little bit. Right. And you also get that um the the you know what after you're done you can edit it kind of deal where you don't have to point it in the exact right spot for someone skiing down a mountain right. so you can see you don't point you don't care about where it's You've pointed. taken away the need to frame things right? exactly because um, you just turn your head to frame yeah it you now. tame like, like and and but there's also there's also and this is something we've been talking about a lot lately like there's this idea that you know you do something and you have to call somebody's attention over here you oh, don't yeah. direct the person no. like you're still there's still direction right mm-hmm. like something be like you 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 show up like this and then you hear you have to you have to now think in 360 sound right yeah. and have something to call them over here because i you know doing the star wars thing i remember how many times like i'd be looking over here and checking out the scenery over here and then like bb8's like beeping behind me and i don't see this 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 ship come in behind me or, or something so i want to <laughs> replay it because i didn't miss it you know so like you know, you, you kind of need that kind of multiple. Yep. It also encourages the multiple view thing, right? Mm-hmm. If it is a a streamlined video like that versus a uh, interactive kind of thing, um, so I, I think the options are, are are kind of endless when it comes to something like this. Samsung announced the price of their three hundred and sixty as well. I think it's coming in at three hundred dollars. But again, it's but that's. Um, like a Rico Theta, like it seems like it's lower end, it's consumer, it's, it's, but it will produce yeah. something nice, right? And and it requires a Samsung phone to operate. Or a PC. Or a PC. Oh, we'll use PC. That's right. We did have this discussion. That's yeah. right. That's right. So there are a lot of options out there to start playing in this space, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And, and I think this is going to be one of the most interestingly consumer um, um, accessible things, you know, um, you, you know, buy a, buy a, buy a $300 Samsung camera and a, uh, again, get a cardboard or, or a hundred dollar Samsung gear and you're good. <laughs> I mean, the, the, yeah. the, the barrier to entry is so low Google cardboard. Holy crap. Well, and, and the way that Go- I, I know Google put their new APIs, we, I think we talked about it. It was the last week. Google put their new APIs in the browser so now mm-hmm. you can unlock that to anyone with a browser. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're going to be clicking and dragging, but yeah, they 
people get that sense of a it's 360 still, view. People are still checking out or people are holding up their phone and doing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was, where was I? I was somewhere public. I was in a coffee shop checking out. I think what that, that, that application we were talking about last week mm-hmm. that, that you were impressed with that I was, I'm still kind of out the lunch <laughs> on. Like I was in, I was in Orbis over there on Mount Lebanon and I'm, I'm going around like this and I'm like, people <laughs> are going to think I'm a freak over here. Just, you know, <laughs> holding my, holding my phone up and, and doing whatever. Um, but yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how it goes. Hey, I got one more story I want to touch on, uh, because I think I got the right guy here for this and it happened to come up this week. Really good timing. Uh, I know, uh, John, you've done a lot of raspberry Pi um, um, kind of courses yep. with, with yep. the youth over at looking for group. And I saw this one pop up. Um, so, this is here we go. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna go old school. There's the video. If you're with us here. <laughs> it's the over so, the shoulder video. It's the over the That's shoulder right. cam. There you go. <laughs> so what's happening here is we got the uh, looks like the the mini Raspberry Pi, yeah, right? The new one, the Raspberry Nano or something. Mm-hmm. I can't remember uh, the name. Zero. X, zero. Yeah, yeah. Zero. Yeah. C- couldn't get my 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 magazine. I I, <laughs> I stocked uh, uh, Barnes and Noble for like two or three months. Uh, but there's a, a modded uh, Game Boy they have uh, rolling with this thing. So they they got it set up, and I don't not to get into specifics, but basically, so they modded an old Game Boy case. Got a pretty cool setup there, and they and they got. Uh, all the attachments uh, with the Raspberry Pi. But I, I thought it was impressive was they actually loaded, <laughs> they modified a game cartridge <laughs> to hold the games. So it actually mm-hmm. functionally works like an old, you, you know, yep. you, put, you put the SD card, the mini micro whatever SD card into the side of the cartridge. So is the cartridge, cartridge what in. actually hosts, uh, I didn't get to watch this video. Um, you sent that out earlier. Is the cartridge what actually holds the Raspberry Pi itself, or does it just hold the memory card? I'm not entirely sure. Because it looks like it actually just like holds the Raspberry Pi, and then the pinouts are all matched down at the bottom, but yeah, I don't know. This looks like just like a mishmash inside it's, of a little bit of everything that, that makes the rest yeah. of work. I it's look, great, though. But uh, but yeah, and it's a fu- fully functional. Obviously, a little more than the chromatic green, uh-huh. uh, cute colored games that 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 enticed us back in the day because we're playing some Donkey Kong Country here. Yeah. Um, but uh, good to go. I mean, you obviously replaced the screen and everything, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's great. We uh we had one of those. Um, again, we had one of those down at Teco, and people got to see like the. I don't know if you've ever used Emulation Station or made a. Uh, Retro Pi, which is Raspberry Pi. There's like a build that includes all of the emulators and a nice uh, GUI for you. And it's it's really convenient and nice, and it works great with a controller and uh, is a lot of fun to do. It's super simple, and uh, I really like that, that case mod and that build there. Yeah, and, and that is the emulation station that this is running mm-hmm. to, and I think I think the Pi is actually inside the um, the the Game Boy itself okay. from from the way this reads, um, and then it's just that he I think they just read the he just mapped the connectors okay from for the S, from an SD card reader to okay. the Game Boy connectors so everything okay, great. just reads through. Awesome, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> well, did, you ever, did you ever see on the old Nintendo? I think it was the good. What's the one that opened up with two screens? DS. The DS. So that on that one, you could actually buy a DS cart that had a micro SD mm-hmm. slot mm-hmm. in it. And then oh you yeah. Could, you could load up. Oh yeah. All uh, kinds yep. of games. Those are and and emulators as those well. Those are yeah. very popular. I, I could own one of those <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for the original DS. Maybe right. A little bit. And that's so. what was a big thing I used the Xbox One for. Was I load an XBMC on it. And when then, you say Xbox One, you mean or I'm original. sorry, the, or, yeah, the, the first, OG, the first, yeah, Xbox. the first Xbox. And at one point in time, I had four old Xboxes that yeah, I bought were. for like twenty bucks a piece yeah. because I could emulate endless game consoles. Oh yeah, you that was one of the best Mame emulators out there, mm-hmm. uh, especially at the time. Way better than most PCs, even because they all of it was built so nicely and they made it use the controllers and everything. Mm-hmm. We, played through the x-men four-player game or <laughs> x-men arcade like 40 times on that and there's a, there's one for the mac now it's called i think x m u or m u x e m u is is the thing and it there's actually tons of them i can't keep well, up with so, them anymore. but the one the yeah. one the one that i hear about a lot is the people are they really want the one that's on the mac mm-hmm. because the mac comes with all the emulators bundled in 
and it has an iTunes style. Um, Ooh, how about that? An, an uh, iTunes style. It's the best catalog. looking one because it's the Mac, right? <laughs> yeah, so yes. I mean, that's, that's that's really it. <laughs> but the, but the catalog it like downloads all the, the nice. cartridge art and the cartridges are yeah, on a yeah, shelf. The, uh, yeah. the, the emulation station will do that too. It it has a, a scraper that'll go out mm-hmm. and it'll grab the the art from the old kinda boxes. Like, kind of like Plex for video games. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Um, yeah, there. It's it's fun to do. Um, Personal request. Do you, do you know an emulator that will play my old Sega CD games as all my Sega CDs don't work? <laughs> um, there are a couple of them. I don't know the now. name. There has to be by now. The one I, for Mac will yeah. play, but I, you'll need to go download the ROMs. Yeah, you would need what, to what download the have, ISOs. What if I have the CDs? Um, you might have to rip them in a weird... Somehow. I don't... Yeah. I'll, I, I'll probably email you a link to one that'll work though. Not that I expect any of these to work with a, uh, the gun justifier with lethal enforcers, but oh, you know, that's, yeah. that's not going to happen. No, but uh, still, I would love to play my original final fight CD mm-hmm. with the sweet music. So now though I'm playing <laughs> Sega CD on my freaking Apple TV at this point. So I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. So, <laughs> there's actually, there's actually a really life? good, if you, if you have the new Apple TV, there's some instructions online that show you how to, because now develop, you don't have to pay the $99 license. Mm-hmm. So you can actually get the emulator loaded up on your Apple TV. And then with the controller and thumbtacks all over the floor. Don't um, worry about that. Don't you worry can... about that over there. Listen, listen. <laughs> I have such hot old classic games like The Adventures of Batman and Robin, which wow. is basically just driving around on the Batmobile, right? And they have some, some exclusive... Uh, <laughs> You know, wonderfully CD-ROM, full motion video colored uh, uh, footage in here, I'm sure is, is fantastic. And, and 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 not to mention on the Sega Saturn, like Sonic R, come on, guys. Yeah. Sonic you R. You have Sonic uh, Spinball? Um, I, actually, I have Sonic Spinball on, okay. my, f- on my iPhone already. Um, <laughs> I, I dropped the money on that one because that, that was the one cartridge I never picked up back in the day, yep. right? Um, that I always wanted. Uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah, just rebuying Sonic games. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly the new ones aren't worth buying, so you might as well, well rebuy the old ones. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Rebought Sonic <laughs> One, so I had something to play on the Apple TV when I got it a little bit ago, and then yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what. The one of the best things about emulators, especially uh, for Sonic games, if you were into them, mm-hmm. there's so many ROM hacks that do weird stuff to Sonic games, like Knuckles in Sonic One and things yeah. like that. And they're oh. so easy to find and and do. It's it's really cool to see all the weird stuff people have done to the old games. Amazing. Well, John, John Lang of in uh, looking for group Pittsburgh LFGPGH.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, well, geez, we talked a lot about what you guys do over there, but uh, <laughs> anything else to plug that's coming up? Um, so we have a bunch of stuff coming up. We're doing a uh, we're doing uh, Drunk Souls next weekend, along with watching the League of Legends finals and um, doing a Artemis all night uh, gaming party. That's actually uh, the weekend coming up, the fifteenth, sixteenth, and seventeenth, I believe. Uh, we're also going to be doing a uh, open to the public land party coming up at the end of May. So if you ever did old school lands back in the day and you want to play some old Age of Empires or what have you, keep a keep an eye on our web page and or our Facebook. And that event will be popping up in the next week or two with with the date. And uh, we have a few really cool classes that we just finished or are in the process of doing. One is Game Design 101 with uh, John Cassie from uh, Game Level Learn, nice. which is a place over in Sewickley. And we just uh, he's doing a four-part series every Monday, which we're streaming out to Twitch. So if you aren't making it, you can still watch it. Uh, nice. You, and you can't oh, ask cool. questions, but it's streaming out, and you can go watch it now. We, we're archiving it so everyone can watch it. Good. Um, and that's he's it's any kind of game, whether it's – board game, video game, what have you. He's doing those. And then we just did a uh, class with um, Yarek Lipinski, who built the Chip Maestro, which is a uh, NES cart that you plug into a real live NES, and it has a MIDI port that comes out of it, and you play, you could play all the sounds from the NES. And uh, this is the chip t- tune class I was seeing yes, the other day. I, yes, I was showing Chachi so, that, and he's like, oh, why are we here? I want to be there. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> He came in, talked about that chip for a while, 
told people how to do electronics for a while. And then everyone built an Atari punk chip, which is like an old school. Sounds like an old Atari. And like, you just have some knobs that you can change the mm -hmm. tone and the, and the frequency and everything. It was a lot of fun. And again, that's another one that's up on our Twitch channel and our YouTube channel that, um, you can watch through it. And, uh, he actually used, uh, it's like a common chip design and there's an instructable that's along with it that you can order everything you need for it, follow along and do the whole class and end up with an Atari punk chip. It's a lot of, a lot of fun to do. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Chilla. I got, I got nothing compared to this guy. <laughs> Nothing at all. Do we, do, can you talk about your thing yet? No, or I don't think I just... we'll save that when we have internet. Oh, oh, that's right. So <laughs> yeah. we got kiboshed yeah. again. Yeah, we got kiboshed on the internet. Two weeks. The Two weeks in a row. I'm sorry. It's, it's up if you want to check it out. You can go, go run oh, it there. Oh, your thing, not my, my internet. Yes, my thing <laughs> is You got up. me excited for it. I, got, not I, your internet. I have Ryzen tweeting me right now, <laughs> oh, asking really? me what's going on. <laughs> and I'm like, I already <laughs> talked to you guys. We know what's going on. <laughs> well, we don't know what's going on, but we are in the process of figuring out what's Can't going on. Can't they drone fly you in a, a new modem? Oh, mm. maybe. Considering all the innovation tech that I know they have from my, my experience <laughs> with their innovator people at that blogger event... Uh, yeah, you'd think they'd have that figured out. So, or or they'd send you to like a local store, local Verizon wireless store to pick up either a modem, or give you a free, give you a, hey, a what, loner hotspot. Tweet to uh, tweet to Verizon support. Maybe that comes with a business <laughs> account or something. Yeah. I I don't know. I I I don't know. We had Verizon FiOS at my old job, and I remember just sitting there with uh, for a day without internet. Or two, while well, they had to replace the entire box outside. Oh yeah! So yeah. Uh, it was just like, I guess we're just waiting to send these <laughs> to our clients. Yeah. Um, God, okay. I mean, that happens with anything. I've I've yeah. sat at work with AT and T, and we just sat there with no internet while they were repairing a line that was cut in New York that took took out mm, four or five states oh. in the East Coast, and oh. it was thirty six hours because they cut through so much fiber, and they had to redo probably i don't know tens of thousands of fiber wires they cut through i i can't imagine who who had to do that and if you've how much ever shoot themselves. if you've ever had to crimp an ethernet cord oh. and just multiply that by like who knows what and uh yeah yeah because yeah. fiber fiber is you can get better at it and like but it it takes some time you're uh -huh. lining up the wires and you're melting them and slicing them mm -hmm. and like Doing all of it to get it together. Whoa. Oh, wow. I don't, I don't want to do that. That doesn't, sound <laughs> like a, that doesn't sound like a fun weekend. I'd rather be over yeah. looking for group. Yeah. At Chilla on Twitter. At Chilla on Twitter. John Chilla on the Facebook. There you go. And I got a lot of stuff going on. Sorgatronmedia.com. We got a... Um, I actually will probably start sharing a new podcast, which actually you can find on iTunes. Our friends... Um, so I'm going to Tennessee. I guess I can talk about why I'm going to Tennessee now. Um, an engineering competition where they make Baja cars. Um, we are actually started a nice. podcast with them. Look for the uh, uh, Shop Talk, the SAE Baja podcast. After our friend Fuzzy, uh, Frank, uh, actually participated in this back in 2008. Ah. So he's very familiar with this. Um, so I'm going to be going and, uh, and filming the event in Tennessee. Uh, this uh, been out, out of Nashville for the next couple of days and uh, doing some other trips for other competitions in the next couple of months. So um, uh, my my Twitter should be very interesting as I explore <laughs> Nashville. Make sure you visit Dollywood. Uh, I, you know what? That, Dollywood <laughs> was mentioned on some show I was watching the other day from like the 80s. That's and a I'm real like, thing. And I'm like, I wonder. I wonder if Dollywood's still a real thing. Because like, yeah. the show I was watching was from like 1985. Oh, yeah. Because, I, I, again, I have over the air, and we just have old comedy playing all the time for the dog when I leave. Um, but, uh, but no, it'll be very interesting. So, uh, will we, uh, so I... I will probably have some travel road story <laughs> trips tech wise trying to figure this out as I go to travel like a real boy um, on my own for the <laughs> first time on, a, on such extensive of a trip. So uh, that'll be interesting. Uh, next month is California. So we'll see how I do with that. So um, if I mentioned I hate flying or I have a respect for flying, I guess I could say <laughs> I've done it, you know, so, but you know. 
All right. Thank you, everybody. Check out awesomecast.net. If the internet works last, next week, we can uh, expect you over here at live.sorgatronmedia.com to join us here uh, in the part of it. I'm so sorry. We got some disappointed tweets uh, during the show. I'm so sorry. Um, but we can just direct you to Verizon Fios. Hello. Um, but anyways, thanks so much uh, for everybody who does listen. And oh, I didn't even tell, talk about the Patreons because I don't have the stuff in front of me because of the internet. Um, but uh, it, it, th- thank you to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast, including at Thistle C Business Develop at Thistle C on the Twitter and the Mike Fedor, Fedor Show on Twitter as well. Uh, supporting it, executive producers um, um, that will help us um, um, shore up our internet so hopefully this doesn't happen again in the near future <laughs> um, and so much more. Check us out. Subscribe to us and uh, and, and tell a friend. Review the show and, and just just share it. Uh, help help spread the show out as we go. Um, I'm looking at the, the 25 uh, updates on my app store I cannot do right now and it makes me so <laughs> sad. Thank you so much to our awesome audience out there. Uh, have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.